الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Bismillah alhamdulillah and welcome to this episode of Beauties of Islam. I'm your host Yusuf Estes and in today's episode I want to talk about one of the beauties that is seldom really discussed. Often people that don't know anything about Islam, they will scratch their head and say, "I didn't know you had that in Islam." But I want to talk about this one particularly because it means so much to me personally. You know, when I think about this word love and i think about islam i see how it perfectly fits together it is so absolute so beautiful when you think about how love and islam work together many times people hear things about islam and hear about muslims and they think that there's nothing in islam about love but actually one of the names of almighty allah is alwadud Now what does awadud mean? It doesn't just mean love. You know the Christians I was a Christian preacher for some time, you know. And there's this idea of God is love. God is love. You've heard that probably. But awadud is ongoing. Let me explain. It means that Allah is the loving. It's continual. And it's perpetual. it's always and it's everywhere allah's love is everywhere and this is our dude when i first ran across this in the quran i said oh this is nice and then when i began to study the word and how do, how does it fit and what does it mean i was astonished because all of the names and attributes and characteristics of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of god almighty they are the imperative they are the continuing always of allah he is the epitome of each one of his characteristics and when we say love that's nice but when you say love in all loving always loving and this is allah The characteristics of Allah are not limited and separated by themselves. Actually, they all work together and you can see them all at the same time in the way that Allah manifests so many things in the creation. You might be surprised to find that when we talk about Allah's love that it extends into his other characteristics like his mercy, his rahma, and then his rahim, and this is specifically merciful. we're going to be talking about this one in some of our other programs but when we talk about this aspect of al-wadud it also goes into another area called hidayah or huda and allah is al-hadi hadi is meaning the guide and he guides with his love as he guides with his rahma his mercy as he guides with his patience his sabr you might call it but subhanallah it's so amazing how allah does all of these things at the same time it's not just like somebody would take your hand and guide you down the street maybe just kind of pull you along and that would be somebody guiding you but allah is guiding with his love guiding with his mercy so you can twist it the other way and say he's also loving with his guidance so all of these are interacting and going together And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this could only be from Allah. Because you and I, we can't even think in terms like this. This goes beyond our depths of imagination. When we talk about love in Islam, often we hear about things that Allah doesn't love. Allah doesn't love. That's the expression from the Arabic. But there are many things that Allah does love. He loves, for instance, the believers. He even loves the one who sins if the person will come back to him, repent to him and ask him for forgiveness. In fact, when Allah created all of us, he knew from the beginning that we would sin. 
And he didn't create us to be angels. He created us to be human beings. Angels never sin. Human beings sin all the time. So what makes us good? The fact that we come back to Allah to repent. When we stop the sinning and we go to Him and we're sincere, we ask Him to forgive us and we beg for His mercy. And then He forgives. He forgives and extends again this love. Our dude. Did you know that when Muslims greet each other, they greet each other with the term Salam Alaikum? Did you know that? Which means peace be unto you. And then when they leave, they also say again the same thing. Salam Alaikum. But in between that, sometimes you'll hear a Muslim say to another Muslim something like, Anahibbukfillah. What is that? A hibbufillah. What is that? Hibba. The hibba means this love. But to love for the sake of Allah is an amazing thing. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was talking to one of his companions. The companion said to him that he loves so and so. I love so and so for the sake of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, You go and tell him. You need to go and tell him. So he did. And then the response comes back, and may Allah love you. May Allah love you. May the one you love me, love you for the same reason. What a beautiful thing. What a nice teaching in Islam. Imagine that, if you will. That somebody's coming to you with this love, and they love you for Allah. Now you might say, well, there's a lot of people. I love my mother, I love my father, I love my job, I love, uh, you know, driving around in the countryside. Many things that we love, but this is not the same. This is a love for Allah. I love this for the sake of Allah. If a man tells a woman, I love you, he doesn't say, I love you for Allah. He loves her for another reason. It's his wife. He wants to, you know, have his wife with him, be with her, everything. Yeah, sure. And that's an emotion. But this kind of love goes way beyond and transcends the love that a human has for another human. This is way beyond that. Because when the companions of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, when they loved each other for the sake of Allah, it meant that was going to be over and above any other feelings they might have had. Obviously, there are a lot of people out there today that you could look at and say, well, I have to work with this guy, but I don't have to love him. I have to put up with this lady over here, but I don't have to love her. And I, I don't, you know, but wait a minute. When you say you love for Allah, this means that in spite of your other feelings, you put those out of the way. Oh, this guy gets on your nerves. He talks too much. Talk, talk, talk. And this one over here, he, he bothers me because, you know what, he's always late. And this one over here, you know, he always eats garlic. And uh, garlic, you're not supposed to be, be uh, you know. But still, when you really love somebody for the sake of Allah, those things don't matter to you anymore. What matters to you is that you want to love them for the sake of Allah, so that Allah will love you.